Um, you know, first of all, congrats to Michigan. You know, I thought they came in here and you know, just won a, a dog fight. I mean, that's you know, that's kind of what it became in the second half. And um, you know, they made the plays when they needed to. I mean, we struggled to get them off the glass there in the second half, and I think that hurt us. Um, but you know, I. I told our guys in the locker room, like, I apologize to them because, like, I have to be better, right? I got to keep my composure. I got I to gotta coach these guys. And um, I didn't help them. I didn't help them tonight. And they they kind of took my lead a little bit and, and played a little more frazzled than they needed to. And I, I got to be better for them, and I will be. And I promise I will be for those guys because um, the way that they're fighting and what they're doing, they deserve that. Um, but... I'm going to fight for these dudes. I'm going to fight for them. Nobody else is going to fight for my team. I'm going to fight for them every single day of the week. Micah, you guys started 15 to 22 from the field and finished 7 of 33 in the last, like, 23, 55 of the game. Did they do something defensively, or, or what happened with you guys offensively that, that changed uh, the they, offense? They played more zone, and then they do a good job of mixing and the zone in the same possession. Right, so it kind of keeps you off guard. It kind of slows you down. We tried to do more attacking, kind of in our man stuff. Like we tried a couple of different ways to attack it, and uh, you know the shots that we got were a little bit different. We got some early on. We got some open threes that we just didn't hit uh, that were wide open. Right, like it's, they mess up sometimes too. But um, felt like we got good shots. We were attacking the rim. Like we're getting all the way to the rim and getting shots right there. And we just got to make them. We just got to make them or we got to draw fouls and get to the free throw line a little bit more. Okay, you've uh, referenced Sean McVay before. Have you ever considered taking his uh, give back coach approach? No, not quite. <laughs> I probably need one. I think those guys are always getting after me every once in a while. But, um, you know, maybe I do need one. Just Somebody just smack me in the back of the head and tell me shut up every once in a while. Uh, but on a more serious note, you were in the officials' ear quite a bit tonight. Um, you know, how'd you feel about everything that went down? Yeah, I mean, I just like, like I said, I'm just gonna fight for our guys. Like, you know, it is what it is. Like, we're driving, we're attacking the rim. Like, if we weren't aggressive, like, and you know, we didn't shoot free throws, and so be it. But I thought we were attacking, and we we're an aggressive team. Usually, that you know capitalizes for you, but it didn't. So we gotta move on. Um, one thing is, we got to be better, right? We got, we still got opportunities, and we got to capitalize on those opportunities. And I need to be better for our guys to get us better shots down the stretch and, and do what we need to do to get the win. So, um, yeah, I got four kids. One, you know, they're all in high school right now, so they're all going. They probably all want to go to college. They're all going to need to go to college. If I say what I want to say. Your college fund is taking a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, uh, you went with a, a unique personnel group that I don't think we've seen at uh, the under four in the in the first half. What was the rationale there, and what kind of didn't go right, if I could put it delicately? Yeah, I, you know, it, it, it that probably bit us at the end of the first half, but um, you know, maybe I should have called a timeout and used our that. We had like. Now, there are five people on the court. All five of them were asking to come out because they were so tired. Um, you know, and unfortunately, you know, that's probably a rookie mistake. I should have called a timeout and let them rest there and then finish the half the right way. That that was a really important stretch for us. But I also believe in those guys, too. Like, all those guys, like, they're, they're, like they work hard every single day in practice. And if I didn't believe in them, they wouldn't be out there. Um, I believe in their situations. I believe that they prepare the right way. And you throw them in the game, and then they should do with you know what they need to do. And it just didn't work for us. I thought we you know we were slow getting into a play um, against the zone, and we end up you know throwing up a late shot clock. We took an early shot, and we didn't need one. Like um, we just didn't play the right way offensively. Um, and then we we were doing some different things defensively. They got a couple threes when we were doubling the post. Um, it just felt like. You know, Hunter Dickinson's so good down there. You got to give him different looks, and we tried to change it up throughout the game. And you know, he did a good job of finding some guys on those kickouts. And it wasn't like it was um, like easy 
easy pass. Like he, you know, he spun baseline against a double team, like holds it, sees the guy down helping at the rim, and then throws it around him and gets all the way to the corner. Like that takes something special to do. Um, so like you know, it, it took some. It took us not executing offensively, um, but it took a couple of special plays for them to get back into it. And you know, that's probably the part right there where I'll be kicking myself all night about how we finished that half. But you know, at the end of the day, it was still tied at halftime. And uh, you know, now you're in a 20 minute fight, and you know, I like our chances most of the time. Mike, I saw Greg Lee with a with a boot on again. Um, do you expect to have him back at any point this season? And, and what did you think of the guys who played in his place tonight? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. It's probably too early to tell. Uh, it just happened. So you know, he, he's going to get checked out, and we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I wish I did know. But you know, we, we got to, just like anything else that happens, we got to move on. I, I, we have a great medical staff that, They'll, they'll take care of him. They'll give him the best care possible that he needs. They'll get him back when he's ready. And um, I don't know when that'll be, but you know, hopefully it's next game. You know, if it's not and it's down the line, then it'll be down the line. But you know, the one thing is we got to keep playing. There's you know, games still on the schedule that we got to show up to and play and compete in. And um, you know, I thought those guys did a pretty good job. Um, Giovanni, Jelani, Caleb just being thrown into tough situations, but especially after not playing much in the previous two games and now to come back and be asked to do more and be put into a tight game in a tough spot. Uh, I thought those guys did well, and they'll continue to get better the more that they play. Your last two questions to Nate and Anderley. Micah, not to belabor the free throw disparity, but uh, when you're attacking the rim, is there a point in the game when the whistle isn't happening where you feel like you have to change course uh, and stop attacking the rim uh, if those calls aren't going your way? I don't, I don't think so. Like, you're always trying to get, like, it's a good shot, right? I mean, how many times this year do you watch Sam drive in there and get that shot up on the glass and goes in? Like, it's still a good shot. And, uh, you know, we run offense to try and get layups, try and get open threes, force people to help. Like, they weren't really helping uh, because they were allowing that drive to get to the basket. So um, that's something we can work on a different way to kind of counter it, you know, keep going with your dribble, get underneath the baskets and you bring it out and get the switch. But there were a couple of times when we got switches, we didn't attack it the right way. Um, and, and again, that's like, that's on me. I need to be better. I need to help these guys be better and get better shots in terms of when we get the mismatch that we want, we got to capitalize on it. Um, but I still like us attacking the rim. You continue to do that. You attack the rim every single time you can, like, and be the more aggressive team. You know, most times it works out for you. Uh, Coach, I noticed in the second half you and Juwan having a little back and forth across the coaches' boxes, and it ended with laughs and smiles. What uh, did you say? What was going on? And what are those relationships like across coaching um, in the Big Ten amongst uh, head coaches? Yeah, uh, you know, it was just funny because he was he was complaining about a foul call. And I've been complaining all night. And so I just told him, I was like, hey, they're not going to call it. And he laughed. And, and, but it was great. Um, I, it, it's like I, I have a great relationship with Juwan. I got so much respect for him. Um, you know, we were in the NBA at the same time as assistant coaches. I'm um, him at Miami, me in Boston. So we played a lot, you know, over those six years. Um, so we kind of built up a friendship. And then. You know, he ended up getting the Michigan job when I went back to Purdue. So, you know, two more years there in the Big Ten and now this year. So, um, you know, so much respect for him. Howard Isley, same way, who was there in the NBA. He was with the Knicks when I was coaching um, in Boston. So, a lot of respect for those guys. And, and like, for what Juwan's done, and like, coming from the NBA, um, you know, never being the head coach and now what he's doing at Michigan, like, like that's helped me in my career, right? Like if he has success as a guy that's a first time head coach in a, in a high profile situation at Michigan, uh, like it gives more guys that are assistant coaches an opportunity. And uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. 
there's a lot of guys that, that are really good coaches, and if they get an opportunity, I think they'll do a great job. And um, I give him a lot of credit. I tell him all the time, like, thank you for going there and having success, right? Like, thank you, Mike Boynton at Oklahoma State, for going and becoming, going from an assistant coach to a head coach and having some success early on. And, uh, you know, I, I love it. I, I love competing against the guys in the Big Ten. Like, you know, it's, it's friendly rivalries. Like, after, you know, texted with Fran McCaffrey today, just kind of checking on him, seeing how he's doing. Like, I talked to Coach Painter probably two or three times a week. Um, Greg Gard and I spent time just standing out there talking after the game on the court. And, um, that's how it is. There, there's there's a, lot of, a lot of rivalries, but they're friendly rivalries, and I think a lot of respect, and I uh, hope it stays that way when we start beating them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.